Good morning, today is Monday, May 8th, and I am walking back into my classroom after not being here on Friday. Friday was our career day, and I took a sick day. So there was a sub, and with career day, there are different presenters in every intermediate classroom, and our students travel from classroom to classroom, visiting each occupation and listening to each presentation. I heard there were a few problems on Friday, not specifically with my class, um, but the problems that were occurring in my class was that there were a few things stolen, I guess, out of my student bins. I mean, you can't put that back on the students. They're too young to know to have to put their stuff away and like hide it. Like you have to remind them and I guess the sub didn't. So that was the only problem, but I guess our intermediate classes um, have little respect for our presenters, which is sad um, because they know better. It's the choices that they choose to make. So my classroom looks fine. Um, but my desk does not. And I just get really irritated after leaving a desk clean that I come back and it looks like this. So you guys know how I like to have my desk clean. And is this a clean desk? No, like this poster was on the front of my desk and then all these papers were on top of my candy jar. Like put it back and I, hand this stuff out. Like I don't want it. I just am so annoyed with how my desk and there was a water bottle, I threw it away. Hello everyone, it is Tuesday, May 9th, and it is the end of the day, my kids have gone home, I have actually gone out to McDonald's and got myself a Diet Coke so that I can come back and get through the grading party that I'm about to have. Whoop whoop. I have so many papers to grade, it's ridiculous. The marking period ends tomorrow, and grades are due on Tuesday of next week. So I really have to get my grades in. I know by the end of the year, I am just slacking. It is taking every ounce of just, I don't even know what the word is, just every ounce of me to get through each day. Actually, I am super proud of my kids. Today, there was a situation where um, one of my girls admitted to starting a rumor, or at least she said it was a rumor, but it wasn't a big deal and both girls were crying and I was like, you know what? You have this remorse that you've told a rumor, you've admitted to telling a rumor or telling something that wasn't true. Um, and I was like, I think that's great. I said, I think you do need to hash it out and have your own problem solving party and call it a day because, um, and I, as a fifth grade teacher, I talk to my students about middle school all the time, and I remember middle school very clearly. I had a really great group of friends my sixth and seventh grade year, um, and even my eighth grade year, I had changed my group of friends um, for the better because of certain situations um, that I still remember, and I use those situations as examples in my classroom, and I think it's important as I get older to remember those stories, and especially if I continue to teach fifth grade or um, I don't know, te mentor my middle school students because a lot of them will still email me and I'll email them back and try to help them out with any situation that they're going through. And I think that's important as educators that we don't stop teaching them, that we develop and build a relationship for students to continue on after they leave our grade level. And I find that hard, harder for primary teachers. Um, I think it's important for them to stay connected in the best way that they know how but even like fourth and fifth grade teachers, I think it's pretty important for them to stay in contact with their students. No. I have had parents come into my room uninvited. No fault, no foul. Just, hey, how's it going? Good, you mind if I sit in? Well, I guess I don't because you can't be known as that teacher that refuses your parents to sit in your room. But when you don't know about it, like that's a big no-no. Like I don't care, come into my room. I had guests in my room today that were observing me. I'm a little embarrassed to see this, but here are all the papers that I have to grade and I've already gone through a stack. Yeah, I've already gone through them. Hmm. So this party is continuing. <laughs>
Clausius. Did I beat Katie Clausius to work? Where is Katie Clausius? Where in the world is Katie Clausius? Oh my gosh. Guys, it is Friday, May 12th. And I just discovered that we are getting a Dollar General on the way to school. You guys have no idea. It's like two seconds from my school. So anytime that we need anything, party supplies, storage bins, candy, we have a Dollar General. I'm so stoked. And Katie Clausius is just now pulling in. I would just like to tell the whole world that I beat her to school this morning. So um, I'm actually really excited. Today's Friday. I don't have to work after school. We are just gonna have a nice, relaxing, cool day. Bye. So I believe in my last two videos, I was supposed to show you guys what I did with my kids to teach them conversions. So I accidentally um, threw away what I did with them. Um, I passed back the student work, but I threw away what I did with them. And actually, I think a lot of teachers might be like, oh my gosh, you threw away like your lesson. And well, yeah, because I know that I can either A, create another one, which I think a lot of people save their work because they don't want to create another document or like recreate the wheel. Um, but I always like to make my lesson plans better. So if I created something myself, I just throw it away at the end. Um, I always, I keep my lesson plan so I know what I did, uh, but I always want to make it better. So let me just show you what I did to really help my students with conversions. So I first put up the acronym, King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. And we all know that it stands for the metric units, kilo, hecto, stuff like that. The U in the middle is the actual unit, liter, gram, or meter that we will be working with. I have identified that kilo is the greatest, the U stands for unit, and the milli means the least. So that way I can help my students know which one's larger and which one's smaller. So I teach this in three simple steps. We identify what's being converted, we identify if we're multiplying or dividing, and I've put in smaller font. If they're going from a bigger unit to a smaller unit, they're going to multiply. If they're moving from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, they're going to divide. And then the last box is their actual conversion, which essentially they're going to be moving the decimal point. So again, in small font, I just have that short little reminder. So for example, if we are going from three kilograms to how many milligrams, we would put kilograms with an arrow to milligrams. So we're going from big to small and they can identify that using this chart and here big to small means that we are going to multiply so three kilograms to how many milligrams here we would be moving the decimal point how many times one two three four five six times and then the answer would be three million if we were doing three tenths milligrams how many centigrams we would put milligrams with an arrow to centigrams we are going from a bigger excuse me a smaller unit to a bigger unit so we are going to divide and essentially we're going to be moving our decimal point to the left one space so three tenths becomes three hundredths milligrams centigrams milligrams to centigrams yes right <laughs> it's always so tricky but anyway, that's how I taught my students, and I love this chart. I should put it on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Hey everyone, it is Monday, May 22nd, and I am just getting back into my classroom after being gone for two days last week because I was at the Ron Clark Academy. And this is how I find my room. Like, that's a whiteboard of mine that was broken. I have to read my substitute notes. My computer's obviously not in a diagonal, which I usually leave it. Everything is just kind of like, pushed together. I'm not really sure why. And then this seems okay. Everything's like stacked nicely. I just have to go through it because it doesn't seem as organized as I left it. So something to keep my kids busy for the rest of the year would be this end of the year ABC um, sort thing. They have to think about all the things that they learned that start with these letters and then it goes through the entire alphabet. Also an end of the year word search. Now, this is not something to take away from academics. This is just for those that are early finishers and want something fun to do. Hey y'all, it is Monday, no, it is Tuesday, May 23rd and I am feeling it. I woke up this morning at like 7.08, rolled right out of bed, brushed my teeth, brush my hair, put some makeup on, got dressed and ran out the door and you know we get time to put my dog out. Um, but let me just tell you about our day today. Like we don't have time to do anything. So I've written our schedule up on the board. As you can see, we have chorus practice twice this today because we have a concert this week. 
so we have that first thing in the morning. We have specials at nine o'clock. Um, we're gonna take our math test, that's the OAMBT at 9.45. We're gonna work on our career projects at 10.15, our ELLA test at 11.15, and guidance at 12. If we have time at the end of the day, we'll probably do science court, but I don't know if we're gonna get to that. Do you wanna know what's keeping me sane on this Tuesday? Dreary Tuesday morning? My Yeti and Diet Coke. Well done, Yeti. Well done. If anyone can get their hands on a Yeti koozie that holds a can, do so. This thing is pretty sweet. I'm very happy with it. <laughs>